if we want to find the square root of 9, on this calculator you type a 9 and then you hit the square root function, it's 3. Square root of 9, 3. Square root of 9 is 3. 3. 3. So the square root of 9 is 3. Big deal, you say. I knew that. I've known that. The question is, what does square root mean? And if you think about it, it's what two numbers multiplied together would give me back the number that I'm taking the square root of. So when I take the square root of 9, we all know it's 3, because 3 times 3, or 3 squared, is 9. But there's another number that when you square it, it also gives you 9. And you probably don't have to think too hard to realize negative 3 also works. So if we do negative 3, oops, forgot my RPN there. If we do negative 3 and square it, we also get 9. So there's actually two square roots of 9. There's positive 3 and there's negative 3. The one that we always learn, or that we've always talked about, the positive, is just considered the principal root. What about the cube root of negative 8? So if we do the cube root of negative 8, it turns out it's negative 2. And we can check that. Negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is, in fact, negative 8. Okay, big deal, you say. So let's look on these calculators. So negative 8 and I want to take the cube root of it. Negative 2. Cube root of negative 8. Negative 2. Cube root of negative 8. Negative 2. Here it's a kind of interesting situation because we don't have a cube root key and we don't have an nth root key. So what we do is we take our negative 8 and put it on the stack and then we have to remember that the cube root is the same as the third, the, is one third, negative 8 to the one third power. So the easiest way to do that is to type a 3, hit 1 over x, that's one third, and take it to that power. I must have done something wrong because that does not say negative 2. Alright, we're going negative 8 to the, and let's do one-third power, and sure enough, negative two. What's going on here? How come, how come the DM42 is giving this ludicrous answer? And I ran into this problem and was using, I needed a cube root in a program that I was creating, and I got some weird complex answers when I knew they should be real and I was a bit baffled and then I remembered oh right when you do a square root there are two roots we typically only think of the one like we said square root of nine we usually jump and say three but there's also negative three and it turns out when you take a cube root there are actually three different answers um, in a fourth root there are four answers a fifth root there are five answers so it turns out that this is actually a correct answer. If I take that answer and take it to the third power, I should get back, so doing it to the third power, I should get back my negative eight, and I do, with some tiny amount of error. Notice this is 13 to the negative 33, so that's a very minuscule number. It's just error in the calculator, as accurate as this calculator is. So the point is, it did give me a right answer, it just didn't give me the answer I wanted. The question is, what do you do about that if you want to take a cube root and you don't want the weird complex answer, you want the simple negative two answer. And if you're curious enough, keep watching. If this is enough for you, you can bail now. And I just appreciate you watched. All right, so you stuck around. So I need to figure out a way to make this calculator take 
and give me the most simple cube root of the number I give it. So I'll show you my workaround, and then all you people who are brighter than I am can tell me how I might have done this in a more clever way. Let's go into the program I have here called Cube Root. Let's look at our program here. It takes the number that's on the stack and immediately turns it into a complex number by adding 0 plus 0i to the number. Whatever number I had has been converted to a complex number without altering the original number. So in other words, if it was already complex, nothing changed, and if it was real, it's now a real that same real number plus 0i. I then decompose that number, meaning I break it back into the real part and the imaginary part. The real part will be in the y register. The imaginary part will be in the x register. And the reason I'm going through all this is there's three cases. Three. Case number one is if it's complex, just take the cube root. I don't need to do anything fancy because I'm fine with whatever that is. Second case is it's a real number, like eight, in which case the calculator works fine and I don't need to do anything special. I'm after that third case where it's negative and real, like a negative eight. That's what I'm trying to address with this program. So right here we've got the imaginary part is in the X register. Is the imaginary part of the original number equal to zero? If it is, keep on going because we're dealing with a real number. If it is non-zero, which is what this is asking, then we know we have a complex number because it has an imaginary part. In that case, we don't need this program, so go to label zero one, which just takes the root and, and as it is. You know, it's happy with whatever the calculator gives it. So that's the complex number case. Now we're going to swap those X and Y registers so now the real part is in the X register. So the real part of our original number is in the X register. We know that we're dealing with a real number at this point. So the only question is whether it's positive or negative. So we check and say, okay, is this a positive number? If it is, then go and just take the normal cube root. No gymnastics needed. So at this point right here, we are dealing with a real number that is negative. So a negative real. We know that. So what we do is we take the absolute value of it, and then we do the normal steps here. So we're taking it to the one-third power, the absolute value, to the one-third power. We get our nice answer, and then we flip the sign on it. And then we go to 99, which is exiting this program. And then just so you can see the rest of it, here's the label 01, where it just takes and does the straightforward, takes it to the third power. That's it. There's probably some other way to approach this that takes fewer steps. And I'm not real concerned about memory on this calculator anyway. So I realize there's probably a few ways I could manipulate the stack and not have to recall my original number from memory, but I don't care. It works. So I was just excited to figure out a way to, to get this calculator to actually give me the proper cube root. And just to demonstrate that, so if I do 8, negative 8, and I run the cube root program, it spits out a negative 2, which is what I wanted. 64 negative. If I do that, we should get negative 4. And if we do like a normal number, let's do 27, and run the cube root program, we just get 3. So it always is going to give us the desired cube root and the crazy thing is that they didn't do this from the factory. That's, that's a mystery to me, why you would give the kind of less desirable root. I get that it's in the first quadrant. It's probably why it, it returns that result um, at any rate. Hope you liked this, and I know it's pretty nerdy and more technical than a lot of them, but if you're like me, 
you kind of like these things when you stumble on them. So hope someone out there appreciates it. Have a good one.